Hello Cali, my name is Charlie Hicks, I'm the Labour County Council candidate and this is a video all about the low traffic neighbourhoods experiments happening in Cowley. So I'm going to go through the, uh, the background, the need for them, the proposals, the expected costs and benefits, the timeline and how you can have your say in the proposals as they move forward. So starting off with the background, this is a scheme run by Oxfordshire County Council, that's Conservative led, they've been awarded money from national government to try to get more people walking and cycling in the local area. Uh, at the moment, the, the councillor is John Sanders there on the left, a Labour County councillor, and I'm the Labour County Council candidate. Um, our position is that we're in favour of the proposals um, and that we want to make sure that they work as best possible. So we want to listen to residents as much, much as possible to adapt them if need be, um, because the benefits we think are going to outweigh the costs. So what's the need for low traffic neighbourhoods in Cowley? This is a picture of Cowley at the moment. So on the left, you've got the school run, uh, and on the right, uh, someone unfortunately crashed into a, a hedge. And what's happening here is a high amount of shortcutting traffic, so that's throughput traffic, and it leads to high levels of congestion, and those cars we know speed more than average, uh, and, and there can be crashes and it can be dangerous. What we want instead is a, is a neighbourhood for Cowley um, that's safe for walking, for cycling, uh, cleaner air, and a nicer place to be for everyone. So just a, as a way of showing this in a little bit more detail, this is a, a video from the school run on, on Rymer's Lane. And as you can see, there's high levels of congestion. Uh, children who would want to walk or cycle to school um, would have a difficult time of it. Uh, and and that's, this is sort of really the crux of what we want to try to change. Why Cowley and, and why is Cowley getting the special treatment? Well, this is a really good map to explain um, why these areas have been chosen, Church Cowley, Florence Park and Temple Cowley. You can see on the map the coloured areas are all the parts of South Oxford that already are low traffic neighbourhoods. That means that it's not possible by the way that the roads are laid out for cars to use those roads as shortcuts. These are all residential areas um, and the coloured areas, the shaded areas, you can't do the shortcuts. But you can see that there's three big areas on this map that are missing from there, Church Cowley, Florence Park and Temple Cowley. And what's happening is that people are shortcutting across these residential streets from the main roads um, to get through. So really what these low traffic neighbourhoods are about is about bringing those three areas areas up to equity with the other areas surrounding and you can see therefore that these are the areas marked out for the low traffic neighborhoods if we move back and forward between the plans you can see that it's about filling those gaps so which are the particular areas that are affected by shortcutting at the moment uh, let's have a look through some of those so here's church cowley newman road cowley road littlemore road and along bartholomew road is particularly badly hit at the moment up through littlemore cowley road littlemore road Crowell road and onwards from there so that those are sort of two of the main routes that in um church cowley that's shown by traffic monitoring uh in florence park now up through and uh affecting Rymers Lane, Cricket Road, Little Hill Road, that's a, a common route that's used as well. And coming from east to west, west to east, from Donington Bridge Road, all the way through Cornwallis Road, Little Hill Road, um, and through Temple Cowley as well, Marsh Road, Crescent Road, and onto Hollow Way. Again, in Temple Cowley, there's another, a second route that comes from the Cowley Road onto Hollow Way. So that's what the traffic counts uh, seem to be showing. Uh, and in particular, in Temple Cowley, we can see there's 1,300 shortcutting vehicles on a, on a daily basis, um, which understandably is causing uh, upset amongst local residents. So what are the proposals? Well, they're all about trying to uh, prevent this from happening, to stop that shortcutting from happening, but enabling access for everyone who still lives there, for deliveries, for emergency services, and so on and so forth. So they are a point uh, blocks in the road. Uh, so that means planters, and uh, they look a bit like this. So it's all about preventing that through traffic, preventing those shortcuts, but still enabling access for everyone who lives there. So that's the one for um, Church Cowley. This is for Temple Cowley. And this is the one for Florence Park. They're all available on the County Council website. And I should say, and I'll talk a little bit later in the timeline, this is done as an experiment. And so the position of these uh, planters may change in the future, subject to consultation, to feedback from residents in terms of what happens. But that's how they are laid out as at the moment. Uh, just a little extra bit of detail. This is what planters look like. Um, so they're sort of wooden boxes. They allow through uh, walking and cycling, um, a bit of greenery, a bit of plants on there as well. Um, and, and that's roughly what they look like. So I've been speaking with lots of local residents about this, those who are concerned, those who are really in favour, and I've tried to list out what are the expected costs and benefits. So the expected costs and the worries that are coming from local residents are mainly around two things, it seems. One is about an increase of traffic on, on, on those few roads, um, 
And what seems to happen in, in the other uh, low traffic neighbourhoods that we've learned from in London is that there is that increase on a few roads, uh, especially those on, on the borders, um, but they then turn, return back to normal levels as people adjust to the new plans within a number of months. Uh, the second cost that people are concerned about is around the reduced number of routes in and out of residential areas, uh, and that is certainly true um, based on what the plans are um, and you know the knock-on effects from there. The traffic levels are definitely our biggest concern as well and we definitely don't want to see anyone uh, negatively impacted by these plans in any considerable way. We want to make sure that uh, mitigations are put in place for anyone that sees uh, any increase on their roads so that that negative impact is mitigated and reduced as much as possible. We also want to make sure that there's lots and lots of dialogue between residents and county councils so that adaptations can be made where necessary and we get to the best outcome for the community. Community. Just having a look at the traffic levels, um, this is what we've learned from Waltham Forest in London who, who put in their low traffic neighbourhoods about five years ago and within the space, I think this is nine months after the plans went in, you can see the top third of these roads are in, within the residential area within the low traffic neighbourhoods and then the bottom three are on the perimeter roads and this is looking at the change in traffic levels from before and after. What you can see is a, is a really, really big, big, big reduction in, in the overall levels of traffic within the low traffic neighbourhoods with, with a couple of roads there that, that take a bit more. And the perimeter roads, again, take a little bit more, but overall, um, there's a much bigger decrease than there is an increase. If we have a look at the overall levels, we see a 56% decrease within the low traffic neighbourhood and 11% increase on the perimeter roads. This was done nine months after. We'd expect some, again, adjustment further down the line and that, that would come back to more normal levels from there. In terms of absolute numbers of cars on the roads, what they saw is an overall decrease that was greater than the increase on some other roads. And the, this is where the term traffic evaporation comes from, a 16% decrease of all journeys. And there's evidence to show that lots of people have sort of transitioned to more walking and cycling, which, which with it brings lots of benefits for the community. So the expected benefits, therefore, if we do see that reduced traffic on residential streets and overall reduced traffic in the area, it's about those safer and quieter streets, more children walking and cycling to school, cleaner air, more exercise, better health, better well-being. It's better for people who are using those greener types of transport, for people using buggies and wheelchairs. It's better for bus journeys because it's going to make those faster, reduce the congestion. Better for local business because more people use them. It, it, that's what it, the evidence shows. And it's better for community because there's more chance uh, meetings that happen in the street. So those are the kind of benefits and this is really sort of why we're driving for and why we think it's going to be a good idea. Just to give a sort of pictorial sense of this, this is a picture currently at the moment on Rhymes Lane and this is a sort of artist's impression of what it could look like um, with low traffic neighbourhoods based on, on what's been happening in, in other parts of the country. So it's really about, you sort of take from this uh, sense from this picture about increasing sort of community, increasing walking and cycling, uh, cleaner air and um, a nicer environment to be in overall. But still notice that you can drive to every single point within the neighbourhood. So it's about basically um, making sure that there's access for everybody. One of the biggest benefits that I would uh, love to see from the uh, low traffic neighbourhoods and expect to see is around uh, people cycling. So here we can see this is taken from Dulwich, who've done it in South London recently, a doubling of cycling in the local area from before and after. And in particular, we can see here a tenfold increase of children who are cycling to school. Uh, and for me, this is a, is a really, really exciting uh, opportunity to improve the neighbourhood, um, take cars off the road for the school run, uh, clean the air, have more exercise. Uh, and that, that would be a really big benefit from low traffic neighbourhoods especially because there are so many schools in the area. Combined to that, the school streets that are coming in, um, we expect um, from additional funding that's come from uh, National Government for County Council, uh, and we really want to see that transition to walking and cycling for the climate, uh, for, for, for health, uh, for well-being, uh, and, and all those reasons. So um, that's a sort of really exciting thing that, that we think the low traffic neighbourhoods will bring for Cowley. To really bring that sense to light a bit more, this is a video from Dulwich, which really gives that sense of um, of what a low traffic neighborhood can bring on the school run, more walking, more cycling, scooting, uh, safer streets, calmer streets, quieter streets. Uh, and this is really, um, really this is a positive, um, what, we're, what we're sort of aiming towards in terms of low traffic neighborhoods. And this is the vision that we really wanna see for Cali um, and really wanna to get there with the low traffic neighborhoods. So last but not least is the timeline and talk a little bit about the process by which the County Council are, are, are implementing this. So. In the summer of 2020, that was when funding was awarded from the national government and there was a big amount of community engagement and communication that went out then. At the moment, when I'm making this video in December 2020, there's a consultation for the uh, pre-implementation phase to, to understand um, all the detail, what the, what the community thinks, um, and that's happening. If it then goes ahead, the proposed implementation time is February, March of 2021, and that's the start of the experiment under the experimental traffic regulation order. And this is sort of important to, 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 to understand. 
the experimental traffic regulation order is there in order to um, have a consultation period alongside uh, all the times that residents can feed in and the adaptations can be made along the way so that improvements um, can be made and we get to the best outcome for the community. After six months, uh, the council can decide to make it permanent, continue or cancel. And then they can, so if they uh, decide to continue it, then it will go for another up to 12 months, at which point it's the end of the experiment um, and they decide whether to ditch it or, or make it permanent. And so the key bit here is that the consultation, the core bit of consultation happens alongside it so that residents can, uh, can make comments based on what actually happens, but also the County Council decided to put in the consultation beforehand as well to ensure that, the, that there's lots and lots of feed, feedback from the community. And we'd really encourage that all residents fill in that pre-implementation consultation uh, if they haven't done so already. So that's the overview. We'd love for you to get in touch uh, with either John, the county councillor, or myself, the candidate. Um, here's our contact information, uh, and we'd really love to hear from you.